Hello everyone, I thought I would just review what we covered. Hello everyone, I have another example of how to do an optimization model. This time we're going to look at shipping and pricing as well as specific requirements in the quality of the cheese. Right. You can use this technique to view many different types of optimization models, uh, whether it's cheese or pasta, packaging, etc. So we've got three suppliers, different price levels. The first thing you want to check as a business person is I'm required to buy 3,000 total units. Do I have 3,000 available? The answer to this is yes. There are 5,000 units available. Okay, good. Um, next, make sure my formulas are all set up. Good. Just some products. Okay, got to minimize up here doing the total. Okay, so if you watch my previous video um, where we set up the basics of C, D, and E, um, you know, at the top here, um, and I'm just going to color them green. Uh, it's a little green here. Yeah, that's good. Um, what's new with this one is we've got these to play with. Okay, last model, we didn't talk about these. So what we're going to do here is introduce you to this sum product formula. It is the same one as we would use over here. Um, except now we're going to use the Italian blend ratio column, the cheese column, the chemical column, the fat column, and the color column. So you can see here when I double click what it's doing. It's taking those and it's dividing it by the C13 because we need a weighted average. These are not provided as totals. These are provided as an average or the actual value. So if we were to do a sum product against that, we're going to get a, an insane number, right? We could get like 6,000 as our answer. And we don't want that. We, we need to get down to these scores because that's what we're reporting them as. Your blend has to be on a scale of 1 to 10, not 0 to 1,000 or 0 to 10,000. So we have to divide it out and make that common denominator and neutralize that value by this time dividing it by the total required. Okay. Very important that you do the total required and not the total ordered. If you do it by the total ordered, solver will not be happy because solver is going to constantly crunch numbers um, starting from zero. And every time this changes, every time this changes, the value is going to change and solver is just not going to like that. So always do the constant, constant here, okay? So the next step is going to be solver itself. So I'm going to take a minute and talk through that. So we've got D16 as our objective. Well, that's actually incorrect. We want to make sure that points to A2, which is minimizing the total cost. So let's look here. So we have our min checked. Now let's look here at C6 uh, and E8 as well. That's good. We wanted those nine cells selected. Down here with C19. So now we're down to the 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 with these next few. We need to make sure that none of the numbers in C19 through E19 are greater than or we need to make sure that they are greater than or equal to 6. In other words, they can't be less than 6. Okay. Down here, um, these numbers um, must be greater than or equal to 0.93. Um, next one's less than or equal to 60, less than or equal to 10, and greater than or equal to 3. It's very important. I guarantee you some people make mistakes um, when they accidentally put in the wrong symbol here. They'll put a less than equal symbol instead of the greater than equal. So nine times out of the ten, if you have this wrong, it's because you accidentally put the wrong symbol there. Okay. 
So when we run this model, found a solution. Everything is greater than or equal to that cheese standard. It's less than or equal to the chemical treatment. It's less than or equal to that fat. And it's greater than or equal to the color requirement. Now watch what happens if I put in an eight here. Now before I even run the model, okay? So I'm not even running the model, I've changed it to an eight. As a business analyst, first and foremost, do we have any suppliers that have a color scale of eight or better? No, we don't. So I don't even have to hit solver. I'm gonna do it here, but I don't even have to hit solver to have solver tell me it could not find a feasible solution, okay? So I stress this because you have to be a business person first. It's nice to code and get really good at programming and understanding numbers, but if you can't understand what the model is telling you or what your boss is asking you to do, then nothing matters. For loops, if statements, all that stuff, all the linear programming in the world will not save you and magically let you buy exactly what you need. Now, you have to be careful because Solver did run, it finished, but it did not give you an optimal solution. So even though we found a thousand units for each set, we were in violation of this one here. So if you submit this kind of work, it'll be wrong, okay? Solver ran, that's fine. You're programming, you set it up, you told it to do something, it tried its best to do it, it reported back what it could, not, not necessarily what it did right, but what it could, and you have to be smart enough. Don't let the artificial intelligence take over. You have to be smart enough to understand that it wasn't successful. Okay. Now, we also want to think about if we couldn't get that model to work, right, because of this high requirement, there's a couple things that we would have to do. Number one, get new suppliers, right? Go find new suppliers, source new products, travel the world, find new people to sell you cheese. Number two, buy your own farms. If it's that difficult for you to find new suppliers, go buy your own farms, milk your own cows, make your own cheese, right? If um, you have some good suppliers, but they just don't have enough supply, talk to them, give them a loan. Um, Give them an order a year in advance. Give them a, an upfront cash and say, hey, um, Crystal Farms, we'd love to buy all our product from you. You've got a great quality product. What can we do to ensure a, a lasting relationship and a, and a solid supply chain? You know, they might respond with, well, we need more farmland. We need to buy more cows. Or we need to have more trucks or semis or tractors. Or we need to find a cheaper feed stock for our cows whatever it is. Um, an alternative could be maybe you, you, Crystal Farms is a huge supplier for you, right? They do over, over a third of your business. But to them, you are just one of a hundred different manufacturers that they sell to. So you have to think about that. They are one of your three suppliers, but to them, you are one of a hundred customers. So how can you change that? Can you go to them and partner up? Can you buy their stock? Maybe they have 8,000 units in total and you know their, their color is eight, but they only tell you that they have 1,200 because other customers have gotten to it first. So you're gonna to wanna to have those conversations with suppliers. And that's really my friends how optimization model sets up and works out um, out there. So stay healthy and talk to you later.